I will show you how to paint weapons that will blow your mind using a certain technique. It's really easy to do. It's not something hard, believe me. I mean, like, it, you will be blown away at how easy it is. Do you wonder how we can actually achieve a result with your weapons like this? The thing that you will need is a technique that we call glazing. This is a fabulous paint. However, Games Workshop does not make it anymore. So you might have to go with this. We can actually use this to glaze your models as well, to make some beautiful weapon. And what I want to show you today is how to make those weapons the way I just showed you with this model earlier. You will first need to spray your weapon with Corax White. This is the base coat you will be using. And then afterwards, you will start applying Gilliman Blue or a really diluted Talisar Blue that I've shown you earlier. You need to dilute it, however, with a lot of water. It doesn't really matter. You will need first to apply it on the whole length of the weapon. We'll be doing a downward stroke just like this and I'm, on, I'm going down the weapon from the tip to the hilt. If you're going all around and you are you splash it a little bit doesn't really matter. We'll do underneath the weapon as well. So I'm going like this. I'm going downward now we have a smooth coat. You don't need to go on the edges, just going down like this. When this is done, you will have to wait maybe five to eight minutes until the glaze dries. Then afterwards, you will do the same process, but you will start from two thirds of the length of the weapon. Strike downward like this. See, we're already seeing the transition from the tip to the hilt like this and we mentioned as well that we will do the bottom so I'm doing the bottom as well so that you know people won't really see that part of the miniature you can still do it for you know having a good conscience you will still need to wait maybe five to eight minutes until it dries again when this is done you will apply a third layer but starting from a third from the hilt if you see that there is too much paint on your brush then you can just remove it from from the brush itself and apply it maybe on your wrist or something the key here is really to to have a smooth transition between the parts of the blade starting from top to bottom just like that to get a really unifying transition, the last thing I will be doing is one last pass along all the blade itself, just like that. You will notice from the tip to the hilt that there is a grading going from really pale, really translucent to heavier and darker. The result is really great and this is how I actually achieved to paint the weapon on this model. It's really easy to do, you just need some patience. Now before we go further, just wait. We will be doing something more to the weapon because, you know, we like to go further with things. And now how about we add some lightning effect to the weapon? Yeah. However, painting lightning is not as easy as it seems and we screwed up. Still, let me show you how we screwed up this one. You see, I really wanted to start with a blue layer, a really thin blue layer, followed up by lighter tones such as white, maybe enough white and then white which I actually did, I really messed up on the lightning. I still managed to catch up on the mistake I made. So in the end, it doesn't look too bad. It's not the result I wanted to have with the lightning. And I wanted to show you that, which still, you know, has its value in the end. Still, after all that messing around, we can do something better. And I was thinking about using this contrast paint, which is called Shyish Purple. Now, this one is really a beautiful color. We will apply this contrast paint to the tip of the sword, and it's really going to look great. Starting from the top of the sword, I am applying a smooth layer. These contrast paint are really, really thick compared to the one that I was using earlier. So I will need to really dilute it so I can have a nice effect on the sword. Look at this beautiful transition from the blue to the purple. I will be applying two layers of shyish purple on the tip of the sword. It will have a really super nice effect with a great transition from blue to purple. Now the success in this technique is really to do the transition between two colors. So after resolving those lightning effects starting from the hilt, 
I wanted to do the same thing from the top. So I started doing the lighting effects thinner and thinner this time with a lighter tone of purple. So I used Gene Steeler Purple to do the first lightning layers and actually worked pretty great. I basically did the same thing that I did with the lightning at the bottom of the sword but in reverse and better this time. You can see that the result is quite good, not as good as I wanted it to be. You know, in the end we still have a beautiful sword that we can play with and uh, from a far away distance it might look good uh, it's not pro paint this is a beginner's guide however I hope it still helps you to figure out how you can manage some effect to input on your sword okay the glazing is uh, absolutely correct is super good however the lightning effect uh, you know we might do those effect maybe in another video so maybe I'll catch up on that so I really enjoy doing this video even you know there might be some mistake here and there maybe sometimes you know the frame is not correct or anything but still I had a ton of fun doing this thank you very much for watching everyone I hope you enjoyed and if you want to subscribe then you can encourage my channel I wish you have a nice day my beautiful people see you soon